Well, hello everybody. This is Sour here. Got a little treat today. My creative FTV world. Woohoo! What I have here is a completely self sustaining, self regulating industrial TNT machine. And you can see some coming out right there. It's 100%. It's 100%. Uh, what's the word? Self regulating, I guess that works. Yeah, uh, it'll never jam up, it'll never clog if it fills up this ender chest, which is the output with industrial TNT. It'll shut off and stop using any power. All of this requires is a source of MJ power, which is why I'm using these two um, energy tesseracts powered by all these super duper electrical engines. I just needed a quick source, so I just made that. The only other input you're going to have here is an ender chest, or a regular chest, or just some way to, um, an ender chest, yeah. Because they're, the, yeah, ender chest, or regular chest, I guess, where there is, uh, gunpowder comes in. I would highly suggest just using, like, a tier 5 creeper spawner. I just made this setup. Creepers come down here, hit the obsidian pipes, die, and they will just, <laughs> gunpowder goes into the chest. Okay, so right now the system is currently on. I can stop all production and all use of energy simply by turning this off. And then you can see it's off. You can see here, this is not using any energy. Over here is a magma crucible. This is not using any energy, although I don't think it would anyway because the lava is full. Okay, so how does this system work? Well, the basis for this system is, this here is an igneous extruder which is creating cobblestone. Here's a pulverizer, which is pulverizing that cobblestone. The pulverized cobblestone, which turns into sand, comes over here and hits this junction. Uh, sand goes down into this chest. And as you can see, there's a stack there because we are full of TNT. This is one thing, it's self-regulating. There's no place this can get jammed, and this is completely fine that it fills up, fills up on TNT. Now, if that chest gets full down there, the sand will come up here into this void pipe, so there's no items spilling out all over the ground, which is very handy. Uh, the gravel goes down into this macerator. Get out of here. Go, shoot. <laughs> now, this macerator is being powered by this thermal generator, which is getting its lava from the magma crucible. Nice thing about this thermal generator is it can just store lava in it, and whenever it needs more power, it'll just start using some of that uh, lava. Now, I've done tests, and this macerator does not have to have any overclockers or anything in it. It keeps up just fine. Now, this macerator doesn't put anything, the, the flint, into anywhere, but since it's an adjacent inventory, this fabricator uses the TNT here and the flint created here to make uh, industrial TNT. Now you might be saying, well, why can't, why didn't you add something so if the uh, sand chest gets full up, then it'll stop producing? Well, stop producing. The uh, pulverizer will stop using power. Well, I could, but the problem is with that is then it would also stop producing gravel because this gravel is a byproduct of this, and which would stop producing flint, so the whole thing would just stop. Now there's a bunch of complex-looking gates around here, but we'll get into those in a second. Uh, Here's the difficult part I had to keep this in the 3x3. Three three. This fabricator, you can only pull, you can't pull from the top. So I used this extractor. Now this extractor has an item filter set to pull industrial TNT and the machine filter, so it only pulls fabricators. However, on second thought, I don't think, oh no, no, not on second thought. This is very necessary, otherwise it would pull from this ender chest since it's in the chain. So yes, this machine filter is indeed necessary. Now, this pulls it from the bottom sides, although it could be anything but the top sides. I just put bottom because why not? Okay, uh, let's start explaining these gates. So first thing, when you turn this mach machine on, there's an iron ore gate here. So if the inventory is full, there's going to send a redstone signal, or if this, um, if there's no redstone signal, as in this this lever is not turned on, then there's going to be a redstone signal. It's fine because there's a repeater. If you just use redstone, it would just keep looping back and forth, which would not be good. This repeater goes into this wireless transmitter, which is simply turning the creeper spawner on or off. 
Now, the, this gate, that's an iron ore gate. Here's another iron ore gate. This one functions much the same way. If there's no redstone signal, the red pipe signal is going to turn on. You can see that here. Uh, and that is going to, when there's a red pipe signal, it's going to send a redstone signal stopping this pulverizer. In fact, in the first place, I didn't think it was going to do that, and I thought it was just going to stop the energy tesseract because I said enabled uh, low. However, it seems to stop this pulverizer as well, which is great. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how these gates work. They might function as a um, strong redstone, um, not redstone, yeah, redstone, a strong redstone signal, but I'm not sure. Anyway, this gate, if there's no red pipe signal, it'll be, this is a iron ore gate, our, our target gate, it'll pull out energy pulse and pull out industrial TNT. Now another part here is uh, if the inventory is full, say this is full, this is the only inventory, it'll also stop the production until that inventory is removed. Now this is a, you can't see it, but this is a diamond pipe with simply all industrial TNT going down here, and if for some reason maybe this gets full, but then some more is created right off the bat, it'll just go over here, although that should never happen due to the fact that if the inventory gets full, it'll stop production, and there'll never be that much flint. Now, this uh, energy tesseract is just set up to um, no energy signal, so when this lever is turned off, this is turned off, and this down here will not receive power. However, that really does not matter, seeing as it's full up in the liquid um, in the thermal generator right there anyway. Uh, there's actually this there's only one block in this whole thing which is not being used and that's this block right here this block this is an air block the only air block in this whole contraption I love how compact I managed to get this uh, now let's say you don't want the lever to be right here well that's it's pretty simple still just go like this 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 put a lever here and see, you can just make this thing right here the input. However, you're going to need to change these to be redstone signal on. There, now redstone signal on, and there you go. And you can flip it in much the same way. This will turn the whole thing on. And let's take some gunpowder out of here. So you can see that that turns this off, the receiver off, which will let the spawner just start... Um, spawning things, yeah. However, I don't like doing this this way. I prefer having it there just because it's more compact and therefore more awesome. Perfect. Uh, let's get rid of this gunpowder. So, yeah. Uh, the nice thing about this is if I didn't... Ex oh, yeah, I didn't explain this already. The fabricators do not have any direct... Um, anything being put directly in them, therefore they can never clog up. So there's not like any pipes heading into the fabricators or like the pulverizer feeding into a fabricator or anything like that, no. It's just the fabricator is pulling from inventories. This inventory, this inventory, and this fabricator is pulling from this inventory and that inventory. As you can see, we have some flint there. Now, it's a pretty slow system, even though it will automatically stop itself, so you can theoretically leave it running as forever because it will eventually just stop producing as when it gets full, but say you want to make it like faster, well you can always just put an ender chest here, you can always just put an ender chest here, put an ender chest wherever you want, have flint, and simply fill it up. You see it's just getting used extremely quickly, and quite a bit of the TNT got used. Uh, you can see the industrial TNT right there coming out, and you can see it's all getting deposited right in here. So you can, if you really want, and you want this to go quicker, you can have an ender chest for flint, which you can produce through a grinder, or, yeah, grinder, two different grinders, actually. The grinder, this grinder, and then I believe, let's see... Uh, do, 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 do. I'm not sure. Pulverizer, that's it. It's called the pulverizer, I just remembered. Or you can get the pulverizer. No. Not pulverizer. 
Uh, where is it? Not pulverizer. Really? The the, st the steel blocks. What are they called? From I don't know. Uh, the one that's like six blocks, like this, and it requires MJ power. Anyway, so yeah, this system only requires a steady source of Minecraft tools. Now these, this um, at a max, it's gonna require 30 Minecraft tools. However, this gets filled up and it isn't used too much. This at a max is gonna require four Minecraft tools per tick, and four Minecraft tools, even since you're going through a tesseract, is more like five and a third Minecraft jewels, so I would really suggest having six Minecraft jewels at least powering this whole thing. Uh, I haven't really made any calculations how often this is being used, but it's really not too bad often because this only produced lava. This gets down to 9,000, and it really doesn't use very much uh, lava per gravel, so it takes a long time to lose one bucket of lava in there. This is just a liquid duct that automatically receives an input from this magma crucible. As you can see, the configuration is down there like this. This igneous extruder just looks like that. And this pulverizer looks like this. The sand goes out the back. The gravel goes down here and it receives cobble from that side. Uh, so yeah, that's all there is about to the system. It's 3 by 3 by 3 26 blocks in all, and I believe it's the smallest industrial TNT machine. Well, that self-regulates. Never jams up, never will have any items on the ground. It's kind of expensive because these gates, these iron ore are target gates and these iron ore gates, not to mention energy tesseracts. Oh, another thing, these energy tesseracts, you can always put some redstone conduits and they work just as well. However, I went for... Eh, come on. Oy. I went for as small as design as I could get. So, you could do this, and this, and this would work just as well, and you could get rid of this torch. Uh, to come to think of it, actually, that's pretty... That's just as small. Yeah, I guess he could just do that. Uh, yeah. There we go. So, that works just as well. <clears throat> Never mind. So, here we go. Smallest one right here. Powered by this energy tesseract. I'm going to say you need six Minecraft jewels per tick, even though this is, like, n way more than that. That's 14, so just one of these. I mean, if you just had an ultimate solar panel and, yeah... Uh, one of those electrical engines that should be fine. So there we go. So let's see. For this, you're going to need two diamond pipes, void pipe, chest, energy tesseract, pulverizer, igneous extruder, um, magma crucible, liquiduct, thermal generator, which is just a geothermal generator upgrade, macerator, two fabricators, uh, two input, uh, an input chest, and an output chest pipe, iron ore, or target gate, iron ore gate, iron ore gate, lever, and this lumar lamp is just to show if the system is on or off. And uh, redstone, these are not necessary. If you don't want it to be connected to this creeper system, you could just take them out like this. However, that's no fun because now, unfortunately, I have a bunch of creepers spawning and they're just going to be getting their gunpowder stuck down there because they have nowhere to go. Come on. Let's go. Oh, and here I should... Yeah, so... This goes to one. Yes. Uh, and you can't use redstone. Let me just show you why. Oh, well, it's emitting the redstone signal. So, if, you say, you turn this off... There you go, see? It'll just keep staying on. That's why you gotta use. No. That. Perfect. So, yeah, there you go. Smallest self regulating industrial TNT machine, 3x3x3. Three by three by three. One block missing, so 26 blocks in total. Okay. Uh, 
thanks for watching. Rate, comment, critique, subscribe for more awesome tutorials and inventions like this. And have a blast. Ciao.